Welcome back viewers to another edition of Focus on Africans, the program where we bring you interesting uh, Africans from uh, diverse backgrounds. Uh, we talk about uh, our continent, Africa, and then uh, we start by asking our guests to share their life experiences with us. Today we are lucky to have uh, two very interesting uh, Africans who live in the Netherlands. We're changing the format slightly because normally we have uh, only one guest, but today we are lucky to have two <laughs> very interesting uh, Africans on this uh, program. Uh, our guest is uh, a brother from Liberia, Khalid Dukulu. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, everything all right? Yeah, everything is fantastic. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> and uh, we have a sister from Kenya. The second time we have a Kenya on this uh, program. <laughs> She's uh, from... Um, Kizumu originally, but grew up in the port city of Mombasa. Let me welcome uh, Joyce uh, Costa to Focus on Africa. Yeah. Uh, Ujambo. Sijambo. <laughs> Sijambo. Hello. Okay. You say, matata. Hakuna matata. <laughs> no, no problems at all. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for coming all the way from the egg yeah. to mm -hmm. um, participate on this program. We start by asking our guests to introduce themselves. Who is Khalil? If, sorry, ma'am. We have to. No okay. problem. <laughs> Who is Khalil? What can you tell us about yourself? Yeah. My name is Khalil Dukle. I'm from Liberia. Mm -hmm. I have been living in the Netherlands for the past 10 years. But you, were, you were born in Liberia? I was born in Liberia. Which part of Liberia? Bain City. Which country is that? That is in Nimba County. Nimba County. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you remember from uh, your youth in Liberia? That was pretty well, I assume. Yeah, absolutely. When I was growing up in Liberia, it, it was like, uh, uh, just like any normal African city, uh, country, country okay. <coughs> where children can play, and go in the bush and, and have fun, and also go to school. Okay. So that is how my childhood with the extended family and uh, yeah, with yeah, living with my father, my mm -hmm. parents, brothers and sister, oh, okay. neighbors, but unfortunately that was interrupted by the civil war. Okay, we will we'll yeah. get to that uh, shortly. Yes. If we ask Joyce, uh, <coughs> you were born in Kisumu. Yeah. What uh, What can you tell us about yourself? Uh, I was born in Kisumu in 1979, and then mm -hmm. uh, two years later, after I was born, my parents moved uh, to Mombasa. So I grew up uh, in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Why did they move to Mombasa? Uh, my father got a different job uh, uh, in Mombasa. What, so he what did they do? He used to be a car salesman. A car salesman? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kizumu was not big enough for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously not. <laughs> okay. Then we moved to Mombasa. Then we moved to Mombasa. Uh, coming yeah. from uh, uh, Kizumu, is relatively yeah. smaller than uh, Mombasa. Mm -hmm. What were your impressions of Mombasa? I really don't remember that you much know. about How young were you there? Two years old. Two years old, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you grew up in Mombasa. Yeah. What type of city is it? Mombasa, it's, well, it is the second largest city in Apart Kenya. Apart from being chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nairobi is more chaotic. <laughs> but growing up, Mombasa actually was, it was a very so slow city. That's what slow? we used to say. Yeah, it used to be a sleeping okay. city. It has changed significantly. Not uh, what we see on no. television now. No, no, it has okay. changed significantly. And when people us. talk of Kenya elephant yeah. and lion, were there elephants in Mombasa? No. <laughs> no? No. no. You didn't see any. <laughs> I didn't see any. It only happens in the movies. Ah, okay, that's the image of uh, Kenya. We have uh, yeah. giraffe yeah. and elephant. Yeah. No, you have to go to the national parks, the really? reserves, to see them. So yeah. you don't wake up uh, and. No, it's not that exotic. Kitchen, Unfortunately, not. No. <laughs> okay. And um, Khalil, um, the, was your education in uh, your village or did you move to like, Moravia? No, when the war started. No, be, before the war. Before the war. Yeah, when you were growing up, your education, your yeah. primary education. Yeah, I did my primary education in, in Liberia. That was in Ban City. Mm -hmm. But when the war started, I moved to a bigger city. Uh, Which that, is? That is Camp 4. Camp 4. Yeah, Camp 4. And I was there doing my primary education, and the war also reaches there, so okay, yeah, I yeah. fled. How old were you then? I was 12 years old. Oh. Yeah. And the war disrupted everything? Everything. So yeah. you re actually remember the war? Yes, yes. I, um, I met uh, quite a lot of uh, Liberians in uh, Ghana at the Bonumbra camp. And uh, they told a lot of Aaron stories. Yeah. What were your own experiences, if you don't mind to share it with us? 
Yeah, what, what I expect. What do you remember from the beginning of the war? The, the beginning of the war, it, it was like a dream that you, you couldn't believe it. That, that it was happening? Yeah, that it was happening. It was so unreal. Very, very unreal. You see uh, children with um, killing innocent women and children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Something. And no one explained to you what was going on? Yeah, then we were told that they, they came to liberate us, but we became the victim. And, and, and that is the only story that uh, we came to liberate Liberia the from the tyranny of uh, Sami Abdo. And the people that came to liberate us uh, became, uh, 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 yeah, from us. From a child's uh, point of view, you were 12 years old. Then. Yes. And I mean, obviously, you didn't understand politics. Absolutely not. So, no. what, uh, what were your only impressions? Yeah, m my impression was that, okay, because I can remember asking my dad, but why is it, you know, we are just moving, everybody is running, and he mm -hmm. thought, yeah, there is war going on, and people don't like the current regime, they want to change the government, and mm -hmm. as a result, uh, they start armed rebellion. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't uh, comprehend, uh, yeah, okay, why would you want uh, to, to change? Yeah. violently. Yeah, violently, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But did you actually witness this uh, scenes of the war? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. On two occasions, when I was in Ban, mm -hmm. the rebel invaded the area, and we had to flee uh, uh, that city. Mm -hmm. And and we spent like two weeks walking from mm -hmm. Ban City to to Ganta. That is uh, the, the the next uh, the big next city. city. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and my brother was a casualty of uh, oh, that uh, yeah, uh, invasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for you, it is very personal. It is very personal for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. yeah. And uh, Joyce, what do you remember doing in Mombasa? Oh, <laughs> apart from um, uh, looking at your father selling. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we didn't we didn't see him selling because we of course we visited him once in a while at yeah. his office. But um, like I said, it was a very slow city back then, so your life more or less uh, constituted just going to school, coming back home. Going to the beach because it's quite it's a it's a coastal town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coastal yeah. Town, yeah. Uh, exactly. And maybe some visits to the old town or to the museums. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got a lot of museums. Before. We have one big one for Jesus. It was built by the Portuguese in the 18th century. For Jesus? Yeah, okay. yeah. So that used to be one of my favorite places Just to go. Yeah. Uh, to get inspiration or not really. I, I have a I like to see old those, towns uh, and the architecture and those kind of things. No, right. Yeah. Was it uh, was it a mixed? Uh, city, Mombasa, Christian Mixed in, uh, uh, yeah, religion. yeah, but the majority was, uh, or still is, uh, Muslims, Muslims. Yeah. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. So for you, in those days, it was a peaceful, uh, yeah. relaxed uh, city. Yeah, very. Um, what was uh, your education like, the primary and the secondary? N normal. The education system in Kenya is that you have eight years uh, primary school, yeah. and then four years in uh, high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Uh, you had your education in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. What did you do later on? Uh, then I, uh, after finishing high school, I, I really wasn't sure what to do. I mean, I knew that I wanted to do something in, in business administration, but I had not made up my mind yet. Then, in particular, uh, is it issues uh, business? It's just a passion that I've had because I majored in economics also in high school, mm. so it's uh, oh, it's something yeah. that I've always wanted. Not to uh, do. following that first step. No, not really. Oh. Could be, but because I. Uh, I do say I'm my father's daughter, so I do follow a lot of <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, you went to do this at me? No, actually. I um, went to do German lessons because a friend of mine German was... German Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine had started doing uh, some German lessons and then uh, she told me it's interesting. So I thought, why not? Let me try German language? This. Yes. Okay. So you speak uh, German fluent? Yes, I do. Hey. Yeah. Um, why should I say something? Uh, <laughs> say good afternoon in German to Guten Mittag. Guten Mittag. Ja. Dauzland, Dauzland, Uber, alles. Bitte? Dauzland, Dauzland, Uber, alles. Dauzland, ja, aber Dauzland ist Niederlands. Deutschland. Dauzland, Uber, alles. Deutschland, Uber, alles, ja, konnte sein. Und in dem Fall, warum hast du dich entschieden, zu German zu machen? What is the connection between Germany and uh, Because the, uh, then I had Kenya. thought, yeah, I had thought um, that I would j go into the tourism industry. So oh, then I would yeah, do okay. hotel management. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to learn the language because Uh, if yeah. you look at Mombasa, um, we do have a lot of tourists from a lot of countries, yeah. but in the southern part is mostly Germans, mm -hmm. and then in the north is mostly Italians and the Brits and Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, okay, so it's also divided. Uh, it's divided a little oh bit. Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And uh, Khalil, what did you do after your education? After the high school? Yes, uh, after in uh, I would begin from uh, from Guinea where I so you moved to Guinea. Yeah, I moved to to, to Guinea and <coughs> there I started in high school. With your parents? So you went No, there? not with my parents. I I was separated from my parents after no, the, the war no, no. when I was 12 years old and fled to Guinea. Okay. So my parents were in different location in Guinea. And I had to move to uh, Zerukure, which is a bigger city in okay. Guinea, because it was the only place that had school for refugees. Okay. So I moved there and started my high school okay. education. And I did you have to learn French? No, I did not learn French. The, the, the school was in English. You have uh, uh, fellow Liberians and also teaching? people from Ghana. Okay. Yeah, and started teaching refugees in, in, in Guinea. Okay. And I uh, graduated in Guinea. They made, uh, you followed the Guinean curriculum and no, the Liberian curriculum? the Liberian curriculum. Oh, okay. yeah, so you graduated in Guinea? I graduated in Guinea. What did you do there after? After that, I moved to Liberia. And I was you moved back to Liberia? I moved back to Was Liberia. the war over there? The war, partially, Monrovia was peaceful. Not afraid? Yeah, but after high school, I, I never had anything to do in, in, Guinea. In, in Guinea. Yeah, So the only thing was to go back to Liberia and pursue higher education. education yeah and that's why i moved uh, back to Liberia, and to monrovia monrovia that's right yeah and what did you do there i started uh, studying at uh, the university of criminal justice criminal justice yeah i did one year so yeah doing criminal justice and unfortunately the war started the again game, uh, disrupted your yeah that yeah, disrupted my education and i came back to guinea yeah, okay. yeah, and I was in Guinea. The second time you fled, by, you fled to Guinea? Yeah, to Guinea. Okay. <laughs> and then? And then uh, while in Guinea, I got an opportunity to, to come here in Holland. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so uh, that is uh, the journey from Guinea. Like what, uh, can you describe the opportunities? Uh, how it started? How you got it? Yeah, and when we were at the refugee mm -hmm. camp, yeah. the, the American uh, uh, Organization okay, yeah, yeah, had a refugee yeah. program resettling okay. Liberians okay. to uh, to the state, to Canada and 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 the Netherlands. And the Netherlands, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was uh, one, one yeah, of the, one of the yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. What year was that? That was two thousand. It started two thousand and one, but I entered in the Netherlands two thousand and two. Yeah. And uh, Joyce, yeah. what is the story after learning your jam? You became very fluent in jam. Yeah. How do you come to learn in Netherlands? <laughs> I actually landed in Germany. <laughs> oh, <right. Tell> <laughs> That's the story. Yeah, I um I got a job. Yeah. I when I was in Kenya, I was a um, office administrator. Yeah. Um, for a deep sea fishing uh, club. Deep fishing. Yeah, deep okay. sea fishing. Yeah. And then uh, while working there, I met uh, my then husband. Mm -hmm. And then he had to move back to Germany, so Is we moved. German. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. He was German. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, I moved with okay. him to Germany, and. Uh, and uh, your room around Germany, you didn't like it. <laughs> 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 no, not really. I mean, we separated uh, okay, after yeah. a while, okay. and then, uh, but then I was going to to the university in Germany then. Okay, which yeah. university was it? Uh, university of Applied Sciences in Wilhelmshaven. Wilhelms okay. That's the north, uh, okay. north, north in Germany. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, what uh, did you study there? International business management. Oh, but you still are, uh, you still following business. I'm still following <laughs> business. <laughs> okay. And then uh, what happened? Did you finish? I did finish. Yeah, okay. but uh, during my last year, the, mm. there was a chance to do an exchange program. In the Netherlands. Oh, okay. And then uh, that's how I moved to the At, Netherlands. Uh, uh, no, in uh, Leeuwarden. Leeuwarden. Yeah, in the north. In the north of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. NHL. Exchange. Uh, what did they exchange you for? <laughs> they didn't exchange me for anything. <laughs> 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 they call it exchange program because okay. somebody moves from that university ah, okay. to the one in, uh, and, then in uh, you, yeah. and then you you go and then what program did you pursue? Uh, I did export management. Still management. Still management. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how you came to. The that's how I came to the Netherlands. Yeah. In, okay. In, uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, coming from uh, Kizumu, file Mombasa yeah. to Europe. Yeah. What were your first uh, impressions of Europe? It was. I mean, I was. I was impressed by the structure. That is in mm. place and the, and the level of development. I mean, you see the a lot of it. Yeah, the infrastructure. You see a lot of it on the TV, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, it was wow when you saw it actually. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Are you, Kalin, what were your first impression? Yeah, the 
the efficiency mm -hmm. and, That's and, really and sexy. yeah mm -hmm. and, and the drive uh, to oh, see people excellent. yeah it's, it's something that really impressed me and, yeah mm -hmm. coupled with uh, the infrastructure and, mm -hmm. and level of development but I was really really impressed after yeah I can imagine, yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we came um, I think a lot of our guests will agree with you on this uh, um, the discipline in the yeah. society, yeah. the level of passion for excellence, mm -hmm. yeah. um, the maintenance uh, culture. Yeah. So. yeah. So those are things that impressed you. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We take this short break. When we con <laughs> come back, we continue with our discussion with uh, Joyce yeah. and uh, Khalil. Okay. Please don't go away. program focus on africans hosted by the popular pan-african writer femi akomalafe who has devoted his entire life to championing african cause we are like this problem and try to look for solution focus on africans is a program to watch to meet with those with passion to build a better african for ourselves and the coming generations focus on africans together we can build a better africa Welcome back viewers, the program is uh, focused on Africans and our guest today is uh, Joyce Costa from Kenya and Khalid Dukolo from Liberia. And Khalid, please we will go back a bit to Liberia. Why do you think, uh, it used to be a very peaceful country, Liberia. Yeah. And uh, actually in those days uh, you hardly see Liberians outside of the country. It was one of the yeah, success stories of Africa. Why do you think it went so spectacularly wrong, in your own opinion? Yeah, f for me, I, I have a very little memory about mm -hmm. the good days that you're talking yeah. about in, in, in Liberia. But what I do know, uh, uh, some of the, the causes of uh, the violence in Liberia is because of ethnic division and, and politicians dividing people based on, on religion on ethnicity. Uh, and ethnicity. And these were some of the factors that led to the civil war because when Charles Taylor invaded the country, he, he went to a particular ethnic group mm -hmm. that felt uh, uh, disenfranchised, you know, this, marginalized, yeah, marginalized in, the, in, in the country. Okay. So he used those he people, appealed to them, yeah, appealed to them arm them to, 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 to start, start a, a rebellion in Liberia. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But uh, looking back, if a few take, uh, took some time to study the dynamics of the war, what went wrong? Why did he decide to pick up? Uh, why did Shastela decide to pick up uh, guns and started the rebellion? Yeah, I, I think uh, the you mentioned ethnicity and the, then the yeah the ethnicity, but mm -hmm. but don't forget also the external factors in 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 the war because Charles Taylor did not come from nowhere and started uh, armed rebellion in Liberia. Yeah. He was actually armed. Yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, that's a by, very interesting thing you're bringing up. Yeah, by external uh, forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's a combination of, of uh, internal, and, internal external. and external uh, mm -hmm. factors. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And. Um, what can you tell us uh, you, after you got your international business management, uh, what have you been doing? Uh, actually, I applied, started applying for different jobs. I worked initially uh, with Eurojust Euro? at the ICC. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What did so you do there? Also administration for the German, uh, the German desk. The German connection. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then? And then I got the job at Intake Care Systems where I've been now. Uh, in care, so that's yes. the, is it Swedish or? I'm sorry? Is it Swedish? IKEA? Yeah, it is a Swedish company. Uh, no, yeah. what, do, what are you doing uh, currently? Uh, I'm the executive assistant to the CEO of wow. the Intake Assistance. So all the dollars... Uh, <laughs> <transfer. laughs> that would be nice if <laughs> I could <laughs> see them. And uh, Khalil, <laughs> tell us something about your professional life. Yeah, I, I after my graduation, I also studied international business management at NHL uh, University of Applied Science. And that is in Lewaden, where is it me? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where I that's met, where we met. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Joyce Kuste. And after my education, I work at Amster Bridge. It's a Amster Bridge. Yeah, Amster Bridge. Got to drink a lot of beer. <laughs> no, I actually, it's, <laughs> it's not Amster. The, the beer. It's not the 
it's not Amstel de Beer, Amstel World. but this yeah. was an international uh, uh, professional uh, consulting set organization where we train HR uh, managers. Mm -hmm. And human resources management. Human resources mm -hmm. management. Yeah, we, we we train them how to be efficient and effective in their oh. uh, administrative affair. And that was in uh, which city? The Hague. The Hague. Okay. Yeah, the Hague. Yeah. So you both live in the Hague now. Yeah, we oh, both okay. live. Yeah, we live together. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you teach people. Uh, as a human. You teach human resources management. Yes. Okay. What yeah. does that entail? Yeah. That that is how. Uh, people in, mm -hmm. in the HR management, mm -hmm. how to inspire their employees, how to motivate them to, to deliver at the optimum. So okay. we provide uh, the materials and organize workshops and how, yeah, okay. how to inspire mm -hmm. your employees and, and those kind of stuff. Yeah. So if I come to you, I need some inspiration on how to be efficient. What are you going to do? How can you help me? Yeah, first and foremost, I would like to study what is it that you, what is the goal, what is it that you want to achieve, and and when we look at that, mm -hmm. then after researching what you want to do, and we give you the direction and and, and lead you how to achieve uh, uh, that uh, that goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And is it only for employees of your company, or do you do outside consultancy? We also do. Uh, yeah, outside uh, consultancy, that is, uh, we do research for, for companies, say, for example, this mm -hmm. company want to enter in foreign market mm -hmm. and does not have uh, the expertise, the, the knowledge, so we do the market research for that particular company. Does that, that uh, mean that you travel around quite a lot? Or you stay in the office? No, I actually, most of the research that we do is... Uh, it's internet-based research. It's online, yeah, 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 online. You, you you seek information, and sometimes you also purchase uh, information from Europe Monitor. It is uh, an international organization that co conduct research based on income level of countries, mm -hmm. economic matters, and stuff like that. Say, for example, you want to enter in the Ghanaian market. Okay, yeah then they already have a database of the population, the level of okay. income, and those kind of uh, information. Those are available online? They are available, but you can also purchase it and streamline the information mm -hmm. yeah, to, to meet the criteria of your client. Have you got any client from Africa or basically European clients? No, n not, not from not. Africa. You're not looking towards Africa? Uh, uh, you don't think we need to be efficient? Uh, <laughs> And unfortunately, we have not come across clients from, from, from Africa. Mm -hmm. I wanted to generate some, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think we're too efficient in Africa? Uh, we are too efficient in, in, in Africa. Efficient. We, we don't need to be more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I understand. And uh, Joyce, yeah. please, uh, can you describe to us what uh, your job entails? Um, oh, it's, it's very Apart versatile. Apart from taking care of the dollars. <laughs> it's it's quite versatile. It's I mean you have the administrative part where you have to take care of calendars and plan meetings and all that. For the CEO. Yeah, for the CEO. But I'm also involved in the business planning process for the company. Okay. Um, we I write reports on uh, whatever it is that he needs to present to the board oh, okay. of directors or do That's research. That's quite uh, heavy responsibility. I'm sorry. That is quite some responsibility. It is quite some responsibility. Yeah. So are you good at planning? I am. I have uh, to be. <laughs> okay, the, some of our guests have uh, they've mentioned lack yeah. of planning as yeah. one of the bane of Africa. Yeah. Because uh, we've spoken to people on this yeah. program, and uh, there's a, a Ghanaian working at uh, the one of the cement houses mm -hmm. in the state houses mm -hmm. that they have plans for the five, ten, twenty-five years. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Is that the strategic planning? Is that some yes. of the things you do? Yeah. Mm. We do some of that, but we do three-year planning. Three-year planning. Three year That's planning. still a lot exactly. of planning. I'm sorry. That's still a lot of planning. It is a lot of planning, but at least then you have you can actually see the goal and you can you can follow it up easily rather than when you have ten or twenty or twenty-five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you do planning, you do administrative, and yeah. uh, what are that thing? Uh, I also give internal trainings. On uh, mm -hmm. I, I facilitated some internal trainings within the company. Facilitate what? Yeah, internal trainings. And what trainings for co-workers, like um, okay. getting to know the company. What exactly is it that the company you're working for does? Is that so a frequent uh, thing? 
the how frequent is the training? Uh, the training is four times a year. Really? Yeah, but we also have different trainings within the company. But the one that I facilitate is four times. Four a times year. a year. Yeah. Just to keep uh, employees abreast of to keep people. employees abreast and also new coming employees because yes. you have you have a turnover. So when yeah, yeah. when new coming incoming employees they come in, they need to know they they have to be trained. This is it? actually there's a lot of things we could mm. learn here because yeah. uh, in Africa I can't. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's happening in some companies, yeah. but uh, yeah, uh, this type of ori orientation. Yeah, not it's not even thing. in Africa. Even here in Europe, I mean, it's, it's not common. It's not common for yeah, the companies yeah, yeah. that I've worked before. We never had those I kind of things. You got a brochure yeah. that gave you some information, and this is what the company oh does. Gosh. Get yeah. on with it. <laughs> and then, do you have contact uh, with Kenyan organizations or businesses? No, unfortunately oh. not. No. Why? Uh, Africa is closed. Uh, no, it's this not actually. No, it's not. It's not. It's 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 something that I would also like to do in the future, but mm, the life happens. I mean, yeah, it's okay. it's. I've only been here now for three and a half years, no, and it's been quite busy throughout. Yeah, so yeah. I still need to get a feeling. For that. Um, Khalid, do you still have connection with? Uh, you left Liberia about ten years. Do you still have connection with uh, Liberia? Yes, I, I actually I was doing a research on, on, on Liberia concerning uh, starting business in, in in Liberia, and doing that research. I used to call like every day mm -hmm. and get information yeah. because you have uh, three stages in, uh, and, and when you're doing research. The mm -hmm. first is the draft uh, research, that is you, you just go on the internet and, and get some mm -hmm. information and Already see done. yeah the feasibility or the possibility of, of making business. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you, you call and, and, and confirm those information. So during that process, I, I talk to people in yeah. government and also friends and, and see what are the business opportunities in mm -hmm. Liberia. And, and that uh, business uh, plan is, is complete. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. What type of business are you interested in? Well, we are uh, interested uh, in, in agriculture. Okay. Yeah, and that is something that we... People have to eat. Yeah, we absolutely. <laughs> one of this, that is one of the problems in, in, in Africa. Africa yeah. you know, food is, is a huge and problem. And we have massive arable land in, in, in Africa. Yeah, yeah. And it is quite unfortunate that people cannot find food to eat. How far are you with your planning for the project? Well, we I, I am going. Uh, it it is going pretty well. Okay. But what uh, have delayed the process a uh, little bit? I have um, started working with uh, Inter Ikea Systems, mm -hmm. and I am in the immediate uh, business unit. That is, go. we we uh, produce. Your demand pieces. O over two hundred, <laughs> two hundred and and and, and twenty million yeah. catalog. Two 220 million? Yeah, yeah, it is the largest production in the world, even more than the Bible. <laughs> yeah. 220 million? 220 million. You got your own printing facilities? Uh, we, we, uh, you we, have, we have uh, printing uh, uh, suppliers Presence. all over the world. Uh, yeah. it that is, is massive. It is huge. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So and you are part of the... The business, uh, the business tiering department uh, monitor mm -hmm. and oversee the transaction of... Uh, Production the, of the catalog. The production mm -hmm. of the catalog. And so I you're not environmentally friendly at all. <laughs> we, we that, 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 that is at the core of our uh, uh, production. Listen, listen, yeah. Listen. yeah, what we, we have uh, a sustainability department. and Sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. And what do you do there? They go, they visit the printers and all our suppliers to mm -hmm. see if they meet the criteria set oh. by the company yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it is uh, and just yesterday i i received because i i am uh, the compliant uh, administrator mm -hmm. that is to make sure that uh, our our suppliers comply to, to, to the rules yeah. and people within the department also uh, compliant and, and also the VAT uh, aspect of, yeah. of the business mm -hmm. ethics yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah, uh -huh. absolute, yeah so and that's your responsibility that is my responsibility Ooh. and 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 I also issued uh, in invoices and, and really? yeah those mm -hmm. kind of a thing so it is a huge uh, uh, department it is a huge uh, yeah. I can't imagine 250 <laughs> million uh, yeah. Yeah. logistics alone. Yeah. The logi yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But we, 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 we do it uh, in a smart way 
because Akea is uh, present in uh, 40 countries. 40 countries. Yeah, 40 yeah. countries. Okay. So the, the catalogs going to, to China or Thailand, Taiwan is being manufactured. Yeah, it's been printed in Singapore. Mm -hmm. so and the yeah, to, re yeah the to, to reduce the logistic mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, problem. You, uh, you have no presence in Africa, I guess. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. <But soon>. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they moving? Where are they going? Egypt. 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 And the the is going to start in Egypt. Yes. Yeah, and, and Morocco also. Yeah. To that. Soon after. Yeah. No mm. plan for West Africa, East Africa. So Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Very interesting. <laughs> um, let's move to this uh, question of... Uh, yeah, you, you've been uh, four years, almost four years. Yeah, almost four years, yeah. And now you've been ten years. Yes. Um, yeah, people back home just look up to Europe as a sort of paradise. Do you miss anything in Africa? Oh yes, yeah. food. <laughs> <laughs> food yeah. <laughs> we do yeah. have food, but it's not the same. And, uh, yeah, it's not the same as Mama's cooking and Mama's spices. Ugali, yeah? I I don't get Shabati. it, but but it doesn't taste the same. It's no. it's no because the oh. water is different, the oil is different. So water oil. Yeah? yeah, the water tastes different. It doesn't matter where you go, the water yeah. always tastes different. Do, does that make a difference? To it the makes paper? a difference to the taste. Yeah, really? even the oil. Yeah. So that. if I go home, then I, I so indulge. You, so you miss the food? <laughs> I miss the food. I miss the, the social fabric, the network, yeah, yeah. And, and the family, the close family ties. But with internet and Skype, and uh, doesn't that help? It, it does help. It helps a lot. But it's it's not the same as, as just knocking on your sister's door, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, on yeah, a Saturday you afternoon. Yes, exactly. You miss the openness also? Yeah, yeah. I miss the openness. And uh, Khalil, anything you miss in Liberia? I miss uh, the noise. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Really? laughs> Why do you miss the noise? The, 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 the chaos, you know, yeah. seeing people. You seeing miss the chaos? Nice. Absolutely. Ho Holland, Holland is too is too organized. <laughs> and, and okay. Now we have to check it balance because uh, <laughs> you started by saying what you like about the society yeah. is the discipline, yeah. the orderliness. Yeah. Now you're telling us that you miss the chaos. <laughs> yeah, combination of yeah, both. Because <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you want to eat your cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's too it's lonely too you. Yeah. When, when you are in in your house. Uh, you you can't even go over to to your neighbor and and have a conversation, drink a cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you don't even know your neighbor. You don't even you know, know your neighbor. neighbor. Yeah. You see, yeah. So in, in in Africa, when when you see people, you mm -hmm. know, like she said, the, the social fabric, fabric uh, yeah. neighbors coming over, can I get a piece of salt? Then? Or just the greetings, <laughs> something as greetings. simple as greetings. Yeah. Don't you, know? you greet yeah. your neighbors, yeah? <laughs> Not really. It says, hoi hoi, and then you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody actually greeting and asking, how are you? And meaning it's the question. That's interesting that you guys, you yeah. miss uh, things in Africa because yeah. a lot of people are learning. <laughs> and they want to and, and not forgetting yeah. the weather, yeah, yeah. yeah. The weather, that is something yeah. also. That's something. That we, yeah, you last, you miss the sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they eat and the food and the, food. <laughs> and the <laughs> color. You miss your, you miss your rice. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have rice here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we like mm -hmm. the the food. Okay, in Liberia we eat a lot of cassava leaf, yeah, cassava. but mm. it is fresh. The one we okay. get here, it's uh, it's some. That's a bit it's, yeah, yeah, it's been frozen mm. and all the Chemical taste and all the taste. chemical stuff like that. Mm. So we we mix a lot in 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 Africa. The food, the music, uh, the yeah. people, <laughs> the noise. Yeah, yeah, interesting. <laughs> it's Africa. <laughs> it's a place you would like to, both like to go back to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. And let's talk about uh, uh, how big is the Kenya community in the Netherlands? I'm not really sure. But I've, not I've a sort of organization? Really. The, the, there is an organization, um, especially via the Kenyan Embassy mm -hmm. that we have here. But I've, I've, I've only been to a few events, so I've never, I've not, not built that network yet. Oh, so oh, I oh, can't oh. really say with certainty. And uh, Kali, is there a Liberian organization? Yeah, we have a huge Liberian community here in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. about 3,000 Liberians. And we have a fragmented organization. People are organized based on, on common interests. Mm -hmm. But currently we are working to bring everybody together and have a, a unified organization yeah. that can represent the interests of every Liberian and take some um, developmental projects to, to, to Liberia. That is something that we are working Yeah, that's an uh, important mm -hmm. thing you mentioned because one of the aims of this program is uh, we have a lot of African professionals like you who are at the top of their profession, and um, 
talking to them individually they're doing very okay but then the question arises why are they not organized in such a way that they can make a difference in uh, back home you mentioned that 3,000 librarians in this country alone that's a lot of uh, librarians and uh, individually you, you're doing uh, good you know, and then maybe you send money remittances back home yeah. but those are individual efforts collectively we ask the question why is it uh, difficult for us to organize the diaspora and Africans to organize and uh, de make demands of the government back home mm -hmm. these are things we want to do we have uh, the financial uh, resources, the financial muscle mm -hmm. because the contribution we're making is a lot to the economy back home yeah. Why do you think that it's uh, difficult for diaspora and Africans? I think it's 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 a matter of just getting organized because if why is it not difficult? For, you are you are an organization, mm -hmm. business management. Mm -hmm. You are also the same uh, mm -hmm. thing. I mean, individually, you guys are very talented, yeah. highly educated. Yeah, yeah. So why does it become problematic? Yeah, it's it's a matter of prioritizing. When when do you prioritize that organization, the African organization that you'd like to have, mm -hmm. and your own life in particular? Because here, I mean, you get so busy that sometimes you forget that there are other aspects to life other than just work and mm -hmm. and home life. And any and big big money? I'm sorry. And any big money? <laughs> big. <laughs> no, I I, I no, uh, let, let me step in. We also lament the shortcomings we see back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, we have to think how do we make a difference? Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned prioritizing. Yeah. Why don't we fit it into one of our priorities? We should. We yeah. should. But you. Like yeah, that, that, the, that's what I wanted to exactly, say. Exactly. Because he's in the in an organization called Bengoman. Mm -hmm. Bengoman. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, yeah, Bengoman is is like I said, it is also. <coughs> Uh, Bengoman. Uh, yeah, Bengoma. It is uh, Madingo language, and okay. it, the main is unity. Mm -hmm. And what we are working on now uh, is uh, providing scholarship for students at the university yeah. in Liberia. Okay, okay. Yeah, we have set uh, a budget aside, and mm -hmm. the money is already there. Okay. So mm -hmm. and like and a foundation. It's a yeah. foundation. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is on the the. The Madingo uh, uh, Liberians okay. uh, uh, in, from, the from in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. but we also have another organization like what you just mentioned, the Small Business uh, Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Small Business Foundation is working with a Dutch uh, 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 institute, and and they provide expertise fund to Africans here in the Netherlands mm -hmm. to start business in their own country. in their yeah. respective country. Okay. They have project in Ghana. Okay. They have project in Liberia, Ethiopia, Burundi, and, and Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So what we uh, decided to do, mm -hmm. most Africans that are going to these people are not equipped. They don't have the, yeah. the professional background. Mm -hmm. They don't have the business expertise mm -hmm. because when you go there, okay, I want to start business in Ghana. Mm -hmm. The first thing they're going to ask you, what is your business plan? Mm -hmm. And most of them are really not uh, uh, prepared, equipped, equipped you know, mm -hmm. to provide a business. Okay. So what we what we decided to do, okay, we're going to have this organization mm -hmm. that will be the intermediary between Africans that are applying to this organization for mm -hmm. fund. Okay, so, so we help, prepare yeah, mm -hmm. we prepare a business. We come to, okay, you come to us. What oh. is it that you want to do? Mm -hmm. Then you explain to us. We structure it, prepare a business plan for you, and you take your business plan to this to institution. This yeah, yeah, then you, you get the money this, yeah. or whatever they give to you. Then you you, go so you get this technical support. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, what okay. we do. Yeah. Is it open to every African uh, or Liberian? Uh, it, it's it's open. Uh, it's a pan African. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it is an African okay. uh, institution. But but what what I personally, we, uh, Joyce and I, what we do on mm. the personal level yeah, okay. is uh, when people want to apply for for, for this, this uh, yeah, fund, yeah. fund, we you come to our house, mm -hmm. we sit down, we have we have a cup of tea, mm -hmm. we yeah. have a conversation. Yeah. What is it that you're going to do? Yeah. We we'll help you put it on the paper. Mm -hmm. We we'll refine your idea. Yeah. Okay. Then you but take the business plan to, to, to this uh, funded yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we do mm -hmm. on the individual level. Yeah. On the individual yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing that uh, excites us on this uh, program is what do you think we are doing wrong in Africa that uh, make us lag behind? What are your own views, uh, Joyce? If we start with you, leadership. I think it starts first and foremost with leadership. And um, leadership. Yeah. That What's we, wrong with our leadership? The, uh, uh, we, we lack 
leaders who are who are ambitious, who have who have a, a vision, vision, yeah, a vision that is that is um, doable. Because you, you you do see a lot of very flowery words coming from them when they are campaigning to be yeah, re-elected, but then it's just words without depth. They make very plans. Superficial. Yeah, it's, it's very superficial, and and even if it is a plan, you, there's no implementation that is included within that plan. Just the rhetorics. It's just rhetorics. So I think that that is one of the major major issues, and and then it comes back also to the people because we are the ones who elect them and we That's keep I mean. them, we uphold them there. So I mean, Africans need to learn how to vote not based on tribal basis or ethnic basis, but based on policies and and also on. Um, on the record, on the track record of the politicians that, that we, we give these rights to. And we also need to know that the people that we elect are, are the people who are, who are responsible for, for our basic needs. You know, they're the ones who are supposed to be upholding our rights and making sure that we get whatever it is that we need in order to sustain and grow this okay. economy. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting that uh, you mentioned that uh, people also have to wake up because mm -hmm. a lot of the guests we, are, guests we have on this program, they've mentioned the bane of leadership. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, there's a saying that people get the type of lead that they deserve. Exactly. So how do you think we start to change our moment? Our we mentality? have to educate our people. And with education, I don't mean like school education. No, the, the mentality. The men how do we change the mentality? Yeah. Let them get exposed. Because that is already happening now with the, with the internet being so affordable now yeah, and, okay. and media and all sorts of um, uh, media being, uh, being available. People are getting exposed to how other other countries and are other are, are doing it yeah, so so then they get to know that oh actually i deserve this and if i want my leader to do this i have to hold him accountable for what his actions are and it's not only the major decisions that they make that affect us but also the minor decisions the little yeah. statements that they make that you know split people apart yeah. because our politicians sometimes they talk very recklessly yeah, yeah, yeah. and we do know that i, I mean the, the Kenyan, uh, exactly yeah. yeah and the demographics you know you, you can't compare uh, african countries to european because the demographics are completely different, different yeah. europeans are not are not burdened by the by ethnicity like we are so we have all these different ethnic groups and there are those ills and and uh, um problems that are just underneath the skin that have never really been tackled. Yeah, yeah. If you look at Kenya, for example, we have land issues that have been there yeah, since, since the colonialization nobody's, times. Nobody's tackling, Nobody is tackling them. And these are all ethnic groups that are really bitter about what happened, what happened uh, 50 years back. And they still, it has not been resolved. It has not been resolved. So such things need to be resolved and then people need the, to learn. But it requires boldness from the... It requires boldness, a lot. And obviously the person who does it first is not going to be the winner. But then after that, it... So you believe that uh, people have to be more responsible? They have to be more responsible. And then uh, we also have to start changing, uh, not only blaming the leadership, but no. we should be the the change we want to see. Exactly. We should bring the change. We, we, we should not expect but them fortunately, to... Unfortunately, there's election coming up in uh, Ghana, mm -hmm. in Kenya, in mm -hmm. December. Yeah. And we still see the same, of, uh, the same type of uh, rottenness. Yeah. What's going on? Are we not learning? <laughs> we are learning, but on a very slow, slow pace. very slow pace. And yeah. um, viewers, we we'll take this short break. When we come back, we we'll continue with uh, yeah. Joyce and Kalim. Mm -hmm. no. This program focuses on Africans hosted by the popular Pan-African writer Femi Akwamalafe, who has devoted his entire life to championing African cause. We are like this problem and try to look for solution. Focus on Africans is a program to watch to meet with those with passion to build a better African for ourselves and the coming generations. Focus on Africans. Together, we can build a better Africa. So, Khalil, yeah. what are your own views with you from uh, Joyce? Yeah, what <coughs> I would like to say is from my uh, business background, mm -hmm. what we need in Africa, like Joyce said, we need a visionary leaders that mm -hmm. can set a strategic vision for the continent. Mm -hmm. and, and that vision should be, uh, for, should be evaluated after every six months or every three months. That uh, still comes back to the question of planning. The, the question of planning, yeah, yeah what for is for implementation? For, for implementation, mm -hmm. and 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 it should be measured. It it, sh it shouldn't be something 
that okay i will go to the moon you know it, it when, should be uh, yeah, attainable it should be attainable yeah. and it should be measured and it should be evaluated so if we do that uh, on on the individual and the governmental level mm -hmm. then i think africa can and why do you think we're not doing this because yeah. the people don't they, they, they don't they don't ask the no, people, there's no yeah. pressure from there's the people. no pressure from the people and, because and, if you look at all revolutions it was people based it, mm -hmm. it, those changes were brought about by the people and yeah okay. yeah i i think uh, the people also have responsibility to to, to step up yeah. we, we can't say okay our leaders are not doing anything yeah. what is it that the people oh, are doing yeah. so people also but have to, to con actively yeah, participate in absolutely the, people yeah. have to contribute to the development of of, of africa mm -hmm. and 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 people also need a, a leader that can lead the change that can manage the the, the process of, of development and stuff like that in well, without input from the people the leader can just take it. He can do anything. Yeah, he can, he yeah. can do anything. Mm -hmm. if, okay. if, you, if, if I take the example of uh, Liberia, the war ended a uh, few years ago. Mm -hmm. six years. And yeah. it, it, the it, war ended six years ago. Yeah, that's right. And then they still struggling with electricity. Yeah, it's uh, it. Yeah, the case of of, of Liberia. It I is, know a lot of infrastructure was it, destroyed. Yeah. But let, let's take food for example. Miss. Uh, can be grown and harvested in three months. Yeah. Right, it's about six months. Yes. Why don't we have food security after six years? Uh, six years after the war. Yeah, like like I said, the people said. Yeah. That the government must do uh, must do everything. No pressure. You have uh, you have your land in 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 my country Liberia. Mm -hmm. You have abundance of uh, arable land. land. Yeah. You can and go and, forest. and plant mm -hmm. anything that you want to. But the people said, and, and the government import uh, rice. rice from from China and and, and mm -hmm. other uh, South mm -hmm. American Brazilian countries, area. and the people are not doing anything. So what we are saying, the new generation of uh, of Africans have to come with different attitude. Mm -hmm. Self starters. Self started. Start your own business. Mm -hmm. and you have to be more entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Don't mm -hmm. don't depend on on the government. Mm -hmm. don't, yeah. So that is something that we especially you in the press have to educate the people mm -hmm. to, 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 to be self started. Mm -hmm. If you look at a very successful country like the Netherlands, yeah. what is it that they are doing different from, from, from people in, in, in yeah, Africa? Yeah. Here people are very entrepreneurs and people are hard working and, and, and they govern mm -hmm. yeah they take risk and the government is just there to provide the basics, basic uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. and, and, and drive the national economy. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately in Africa, the government is not playing its part. The people not playing their are not part playing either. their part. Yeah. The, in Africa, the governments are playing for the Christmas, sort of. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> the people are looking up to government to... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah exactly yeah. so. Yeah. 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 If tomorrow President uh, Ellen Salif call, you receive a call, the president of Liberia is on the line. And uh, Khalil, I need some uh, strategic plan from you. What are you going to suggest to her? First, uh, uh, what is the what is it Liberia need most today? Yeah. That is energy. And 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 we investors want to take business to Liberia, mm -hmm. but they don't want because there is no electricity. People, farmers want to move their goods. Mm -hmm. Traders want to move from different part of the country, mm -hmm. but there is no road. So one thing I would tell Ellen is to invest money in rural construction. Why do you think she's not doing it? I have no idea. <laughs> no, it's really, um, on this program also we've uh, spoken to a lot of Africans. Mm. And we see our leaders going to conferences, uh, United Nations, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Oh, we want investors to come. But the question remains, which investor will come when there's no electricity? Mm -hmm. no. Why do you think this is difficult for them to grasp? I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's difficult for them to grasp at all Why because, because most of our leaders are very educated people and most of them are even educated in, in Europe or in the US. Yes. But I think once they, they, they attain the power, they just forget all these things and, and, and they don't see... Um, the connection. They don't see the connection anymore. And, and also Why if, is, if you, is there if something in our state houses that make them uh, go blind or...? It, it, I think it's also the way the way that that we uphold them because for example if if um if a if a if a, a president an african president is going through the streets they will never take him through the slums of mathari yeah, so, so it's he high protocol and it's, it's high protocol with the siren and the roads are all clear so the people and are unlike 
uh, yeah, Europe, exactly. Yeah. Unlike Europe, Lenders. where you can even meet Root, Rute, uh, the, the prime minister, minister uh, in, in the city center yeah, on a bicycle. <laughs> exactly. But mm. but for them, they don't really what see I, the reality. Okay, we created a sort of imperial uh, presidency. Yeah. I, and uh, yeah. talking about Kenya, yeah. there was this book I read, uh, It is Our Turn to Eat. We see politics as a way to. Yeah, it's our turn to. Yeah, not, it's our time to, to, to benefit from yeah. Uh, from yeah, mm. and 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 that brings me back to also to the same thing that I said earlier that we we vote for these people based on on eth- ethnicity. ethnicity so because we, we I will say I will vote for this man because he's a Luo man and he will bring development in to Kisumu Luo. to Luo land or whatever. But if this man has not brought development all his life, his life, and he's been a a, a, a politician for more than twenty Georgia years, and you have not seen any development, no. why would I think that all of a sudden, because he's the president or because he's the prime minister, he's going to bring development in that area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we have very limited. But does it have to do with education or so what? Awareness. I think it has awareness. to do a lot with awareness and 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 what our expectations are. Because if you if you if you go back to to when when we we. Um, African countries attained independence. Mm-hmm. The leaders that they got then were not leaders that they elected. They were thrust upon them. Oh, no, yeah. And those leaders stayed for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, and then the they were cult. Exactly. And and then they were they were um uh, taken over by militant oh, leaders yeah, yeah. or tyrants. So this concept of having to vote for for a leader and having expectations from mm-hmm. them, it's foreign to us and it's something that we are slowly becoming yeah, aware yeah, of yeah, yeah, now yeah. that we are getting exposed. So uh, you think the, uh, you think the Kenya is on the right path? I think we are on the a very good uh, constitution, uh, one of the best. Uh, yeah, we have a good constitution and and uh, and also we have this uh, 2030 plan that uh, Kibaki's president oh, yeah, brought yeah, yeah. in 2005. Okay which is based on three pillars, the economic pillar, the social pillar, and the political pillar. Mm-hmm. It's all very good plans, but again, on paper, on paper the implementation. Mm-hmm. If you talk about economic pillar and you want to, to, to get a sustained growth of 10% for 25 years, you've not had a sustained growth of up to 9% for okay. the past 50 years. How do you think you're going to attain this? And why aren't, why aren't we as Kenyans you know, asking them, but how are you going to achieve, to achieve this? It. Exactly. There are no questions here. There are no questions being the, asked. Uh, your members of parliament are mm-hmm. among the best people in the world. They are among the best people. Uh, there are questions, and there have been a lot of uh, of uh, uh, protests on the yeah, streets. On the street, yeah. So it is getting building there. Up. It's building up. But another thing is, uh, follow um, Kebaki has uh, mm-hmm. this vision uh, 2030. His mm-hmm. uh, terms end in December. Mm-hmm. Would that be sustainability? Sustainability. In sustainability. Yeah. Will the new president carry forward? This feature. I hope so. You hope, but it's not uh, so. part of the constitution. It, it is part of the constitution, okay. but but like I said, we, you you never you know never what know. Uh, what leaders do. So we, know. as 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 the as the citizens and the people, we have to uphold them to this uh, to and, uh, these policies. Yeah, I think we are forgetting uh, uh, something here, and that is uh, greed in, yeah. in, in in Africa. But is greed uh, African or is it political? It's political, I would say. And yeah. that's the question we have to ask. Yeah. When we look at uh, the, the mess the bankers yeah. caused in uh, Western countries. Yeah, because w- when I uh, mention greed, greed yeah. I, I think uh, why is it uh, our leaders are not investing in infrastructure mm-hmm. and why they are not supporting their own people. And, and I, I mentioned the, the word greed because mm-hmm. most people coming into government mm-hmm. they are just coming to loot, to loot yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 when is that they the perception is that the reality uh, it's, it, it is the reality because uh, most of our ministers uh, mm-hmm. uh, in 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 africa. In, in africa they they, they take government money mm-hmm, yeah. they don't spend it on the internal purpose mm-hmm. and and they just invest not it. only that another thing we should see is i look at this country the netherlands the prime minister lives in his own house yes he drives his own car. Yeah. But we, uh, Liberia, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, the, our ministers are kept at state expenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They get free cars. Yeah. Uh, what? And 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 no those those incomes. those resources yeah. could be used to build school. Yeah. Send mm-hmm. children to to to, to school. Yeah. And 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 use part of that money to to construct road, b- hospitals, Invest. and and have mm-hmm. But unfortunately. They are using uh, yes. those revenues 
just to yes. in, in, enrich them, themselves the, the at, the, at the expense yeah. of, of poor uh, uh, the, African. You mean the, the, you're talking about the political elite? The, mm-hmm. the, the political elite, yeah. It has and become a venue to enjoy good life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It is the only route to, 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 being, a, yeah, to being a successful person. Mm-hmm. So yes. what? It's sad the way you look at it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It because is. It, uh, it's like a vicious circle. Yeah. yeah. Because the uh, people want to go to politics. Uh, yeah. Politics become do or die. Exactly. Yeah. When I was growing up, uh, yeah. coming back to the beginning of the program, yeah. my uh, uh, ambition was to be a politician, to study so political science. science okay. When I went to Monrovia, I studied criminal justice. Mm-hmm. But when I came to this Holland, uh, mm-hmm. to this country, the Netherlands, see the level of development, the the the, the, the infrastructure, the infrastructure and everything, then I was like, okay, I'm going to do something that I can contribute back to the society. society. And yeah. another thing is that uh, here, people, yeah. uh, in this country, yeah. Netherlands, people um, get into profession, they make their money in their profession, yeah. before they go to politics. Exactly. Yeah. In Africa, uh-huh. it's the other way around. Yeah, people are so, yeah, prominent mo- politicians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the times I receive <laughs> questions on, on Facebook, yeah. when are you going back to Liberia to work for government? I have yeah. old friends in the yeah, state yeah, in yeah, Liberia yeah. Mm-hmm. come and work for government mm-hmm. and I always tell them, no, I don't want to make my money through government. Mm-hmm. I want to start my, my own private, business, private be, private yeah, be successful yeah. Mm-hmm. and maybe in the future have a contri- seat. Yeah, mm-hmm. have a seat in, in, in Is that the same idea yeah, you share? Yes, but not... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to be in politics. My My... My dream is, is actually to, to go into consultancy when it comes to people development and business development. Mm-hmm. That, that is the, where I have my passion in, and that's where mm-hmm. I see myself contributing back mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. You know politics for you? Not really, grassroots politics. Grassroots yeah. Yeah. That mm-hmm. uh, directly, impact, uh, directly uh, impacts the people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, uh, and in if uh, you're also in uh, management, if um, I think there are a lot of. Uh, <laughs> I live professional people in Kenya, <laughs> so I don't think the press, the press is going to call you. Just, no. in, a, just in our dreams, uh, yeah. we receive a call from President uh, Kibaki. Yeah. So Joyce, uh, please, I need some uh, strategic uh, yeah. planning from you. What areas are you going to suggest? I would I would suggest first and foremost human development, because although although um, the level of literacy in Kenya is quite high, mm-hmm. with, with at least ninety percent, I think, of the girls already attaining primary school and about 95% of the boys. I still mm. think where we lack is, is in um, uh, structuring that education because education in, in most African countries is, see, is seen as a way of acquiring status. You know, if you have good grades, then mm-hmm. everybody expects you to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Okay. But the economy is not grown by only these three sectors. You have so many different sectors. Okay. And that's one of the things that, that amazes me in, in, in a country like, like Netherlands or in Germany, mm-hmm. where you see that the education system, it caters for all. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. is included. So, so whichever sector you go to, whether it is manual handwork or it, it, it is scattered for people. You know, the, the 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 workforce is ready, and in Africa we don't have that. It, like like now, for example, we are we are uh, doing a lot of business with China. Okay. But the Chinese are bringing their expertise, and they're also bringing their own workforce. Their own so they ex- when they go back, the expertise goes back with them. Oh, yeah. So when we need, they're more, really not transferring any knowledge. No. The knowledge is not being transferred, yeah. and that is the, one of the areas where we, we, we really lack. Because if they would invest in this, then it yeah, would yeah, at yeah. least contribute. But to it's also very growth. interesting that uh, you mentioned education because uh, the educated Africans are, uh, should I put it, alienated from their society. Mm-hmm. You yeah. go to university, you don't want to speak yeah. your language, you no. don't yeah. want to wear your... Yeah, yeah. exactly. But yeah, in Europe, uh, education mm-hmm. makes you part and parcel of the exactly. society. Exactly. So yeah. how, do we, yeah. how yeah. do we break this thing? Yeah, I, I think, uh, like, like she said, we have to uh, encourage our people, not everybody have to pursue uh, university education, education. Yeah. technical, yeah. technical it's education. Also exactly, it's and, also and, important. And, uh, and the, the point is, mm. I don't know about Kenya very mm. much, but in uh, West Africa, mm. from secondary school, when you go to secondary school, mm. you are discouraged from speaking your local language. Yes. Yeah. And then you go to university, you, you are expected to wear tie. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Speak certain way, dress certain way. Yeah. So, but you don't see that uh, in Europe. No, no, you don't see that. What's wrong with us? <laughs> I, 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 have, I think it's also just we, we, we don't make our people aware that there's more there's more to education than just you know achieving a certain status from being a lawyer or having a doctor title and and one of the ways we can also do that by uh, to encourage students to pursue other areas mm-hmm. is 
include internships as early as primary school. In the, like, for example, in Kenya, you have the eight years primary school. Mm -hmm. So in the seventh or eighth grade, let the students go for four weeks internship yeah, somewhere so that they can know where they, how they should orient themselves in the future because people have different talents. You have to De develop, it. develop those yeah. talents, yeah. How about civics, uh, uh, civics education, which mm -hmm. is where uh, children are molded? Yeah. And well, uh, in this country, yeah. the children are reoriented to think Dutch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they tell them the history, the children, yeah. all the important things yeah. in the country. Yeah. But with, in Africa, don't take culture as no. uh, important. No. no. Is that part why? Because this, we don't have good civics education. Yeah. That's why our politics is going wrong. Yeah, the curriculum. Yeah. Look, look I think, the yeah, <laughs> I think one thing also we need to do in Africa is to reevaluate our curriculum, yeah. what we are teaching uh, yeah. our, our, our so, uh, students. I, I will give uh, a case. Yeah, and a, a student from, from Nigeria was uh, studying at the same university. I did my education, mm -hmm. and he, he's a mechanic uh, engineer. Yeah, engineering. Mm -hmm. And he did uh, some mathematics, but the formula that he used is something that has not been used in the <laughs> Netherlands for more than 20 years. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was a yeah, so, <laughs> the professor so, was so even the professor, he, he got the answer <laughs> the, the, the right way, but the steps that he used is, not, is something that, they, that they abandoned long yeah, long. more than 20 years ago. <laughs> so in, in, in Africa, we, we really need to change the the yeah, curriculum, curriculum make it more practical yeah. when when practical, i was yeah, yeah when i was uh, uh, studying at uh, the high school mm -hmm. i was doing the french revolution the russian revolution <laughs> the american Which are totally irrelevant, irrelevant to my uh, uh, experience my yeah, upbringing yeah. so in in africa there are a lot of unnecessary materials yeah, in our curriculum in our just well, get is it. that the case yeah. in uh, Kenya? Yeah, but they're changing it. But I, I feel they're changing it for the worst. I mean, it's really? when when you're making change in the education system, you don't just change it because people say, yeah, now you have to change it. And you, it it has to be well thought out, and it has to be something that is is going to impact the students positively. So it, it should be something usable in the future. You don't just say we have twelve subjects, let's reduce it to eight. And then you just think, okay, let's remove sciences or remove arts and craft because it's not important. It has to be more realistic. Exactly, it has to be more realistic. Yeah. Mm. And um, like for now, in the primary school, they have reduced, uh, they have taken out history, which is a shame, I think. Took out history. What, what is a man without without? The roots, without <laughs> exactly. So they, they, took they, they took that out. So they, they've compressed it now into. Um, uh, I don't. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's it's a combination of of religious education. Uh, geography, civics, and it's all combined together. So the history part is a very, very mi minute part. So when I talk to my n nephews and nieces and I ask yeah. them some things that we learned in the history classes, they're like, mm. what are you and talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing that we should learn from, from this country, the Netherlands, the education... Yeah. I was going to ask, uh, the mm. next question is, uh, you guys have been in this country for yeah. a while. Yeah. What are lessons do you think Africans can learn from a country like the Netherlands? Yeah, from since we are talking about education, mm -hmm. one of the things that we should uh, uh, learn from, from, from Holland is that the educational system accommodates everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, can, yeah, you can go to university, you can go to a vocational training. Irrespective of your irrespective, uh, status. Yeah, 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 status. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is good because mm -hmm. people that coming from uh, uh, from the training, vocational training background, mm -hmm. they can fit in the economy. Okay. But unlike yeah, in, in, in Africa, yeah, unlike in Africa, everybody yeah has to Whatever go to university, and at the end of the day, yeah. there are not enough uh, 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 job for all yeah. the people, and they're not trained to be entrepreneurs. And, uh, yeah, no, no. no. The and the government yeah. ends up being yeah. the biggest employer, yeah, 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 yeah. which yeah. is a waste of revenue. So education, yeah. that is something that we have to learn uh, from. And and one thing I was discussing with a friend yesterday mm -hmm. that most countries in Africa we should stop looking at uh, England, America or China. Mm -hmm. Those are huge countries. The dynamics are not mm -hmm. the different, same. It's, yeah. it's different. Mm -hmm. Ghana is a, is a small country, population yeah, wide. Look more yeah, look, yeah, look like, uh, look at Holland, for example. Mm -hmm. What is it that they are doing good? Then okay. you, you, yeah, you, 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 take you, examples yeah. from Take it. example from yeah. it. When you look at the efficiency, the education, the health uh, in sector, and, 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 and that is something that will help yeah, us yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and we should try to restructure uh, our tax code. Mm -hmm. People have to pay tax. People have to contribute uh, uh, mm -hmm. to the development of mm -hmm. the country. 
and 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 try to 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 trade in world yeah, yeah. Well, always yeah. Intra yeah intra 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 trade. africa trade it's huge it, it is a massive revenue yeah. but we don't yeah. consider yeah. it and everybody yeah. aspires to trade you know to export but yeah. even better yeah. in uh, east africa you got the the custom union you know? yeah now we did in yeah. uh, west africa is still a big uh, yeah. but, but, big but, challenge. but but it's not it. open. It's, it's, no, I know it's a big it's, challenge for it's, us. It's theory, yeah. mm -hmm. but but when you try to move goods from from <laughs> Ghana to Africa, just imagine. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, let me tell you a s uh, story. Yeah. Yeah. I interview a business uh, man in Ghana mm -hmm. yeah. who was exporting. who tried to export something to Liberia. Yeah. Between Ghana and Liberia, there's only one country, yeah. Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He has to ship his goods to Spain. Yeah. Yeah, then from Spain they will ship it to Liberia. Yeah. Because there's no connection between the Ghana yeah. and uh, Liberia. Wow. Yeah. So that is something that is, uh, yeah, that, that is that is very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. our leaders are not saying that. So they what seen it, but they keep yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what we are saying, the new mm -hmm. generation of Africans have to have to, have to step up, challenge their leader, demand change. Yeah. If we don't do that, nothing will happen no, in africa yeah. Yeah. we are talking about holland america and other advanced development country mm -hmm. it is the people who, made the demands who, the who demands the leader mm -hmm. and and when you don't do it they throw you out of the out of office mm -hmm. you see now there is election uh, yeah election is in is, is taking place in america yeah. mm -hmm. very soon they, they might mm -hmm. Pro, obama. yeah obama yeah, out of obama. office yeah. because he's not delivering mm -hmm. to their expectation mm -hmm. so we have to yeah again i come back to you as people in the press mm -hmm. have to educate the people because informed people make yeah. wise decisions okay. yeah. i do <laughs> very much appreciate uh, the contribution <laughs> for both of you on a personal level joyce yeah. what are your plans for the future oh <laughs> um for now we are here mm -hmm. so but in a few years we would like to go back uh, to africa I would love to see you in uh, Africa. Yes. <laughs> we need the brain, we need the contribution. It's not a one man's job. We no. do our best on this program. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we invite people like you to yeah. share ideas. We have uh, huge potentials in Africa. Mm -hmm. We have the resources, we have exactly. the population. And then that, the question is what are we exactly are we doing wrong? That's the type of questions we post on this program. Yeah. So I'm very glad that uh, we have contributions from you. And Khalil, yeah. what's your, what are the plans? Yeah, before coming to my plan, I just yeah, want to yeah. say something. Go ahead, go ahead. In, in in Africa today, yeah. we have over three million middle class African. Three million. Yeah. Three million people. That is uh, that is like the population of United States of America. Three hundred so, million. Yeah. Three million. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it Africa, there mm -hmm. is potential in Africa. There is enough market. There, there is yeah. enough market. Yeah. But what we have to do, we have to to, to wake up. And, and earnest. So we don't know what we don't know the no, potential. No, we, we, we don't, don't know it. there is potential. It, no. you see, we don't recognize yeah. the potential. Yeah. I have Three hundred million uh, middle class. middle yeah. class African. They yeah. they, so they so have the purchasing power yeah. to buy anything yeah. Europeans can buy uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in, in Europe. Yes, uh, yeah. So it is a huge potential. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge market. It's, yeah, it's already. It, it is. Yeah, and it's growing. And it's growing every day. So what? Yeah, Joyce and I, we are very uh, uh, fortunate, yeah. very privileged to get a, a good yeah, education yeah. here mm -hmm. in, 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 in Europe, mm -hmm. but we are not needed here. Mm -hmm. we, we are really not needed. There are millions of people, people like us in this country mm -hmm. that are contributing to the development of the mm -hmm. Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And even if we leave today, mm -hmm. Holland would not, no they will no. not make us. So. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, we yeah. are needed, so that's and why. More appreciated, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's why we have decided, mm -hmm. yeah, in the future to go back home in Africa, mm -hmm. where we can contribute to the development of, of the continent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and she has interest in empowering, like she said, in consultancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, empowering women, mm -hmm. providing education uh, to children. Mm -hmm. And I will go in the direction of uh, of, of doing business in in, in mm -hmm. Iberia in the future, expand mm -hmm. it to mm -hmm. other. Uh, you, you mentioned agriculture. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, agriculture. <laughs> I say we have to eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> agriculture is something so that sustainable. Is, uh, agriculture. So that is the plan wow. for the, for yeah. the future. Yeah. yeah. I wish you both uh, the best of luck. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you. Having you on this <laughs> thank you very thank much you for really having us. It's great. It was very really nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank, yeah, thank you. you very much, uh, viewers, for this uh, edition of Focus on Africa. It has been wonderful. <laughs>
talking with uh, Joyce and uh, Karen. It's really interesting uh, discussion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, the joy we receive from this program is when we talk with Africans like you. Um, our philosophy in back in Africa is optimistic. We are very optimistic yeah. people. So, of course, there are a lot of uh, shortcomings. We present, we talk, we yeah. learn this, but uh, we remain. We very smile all the time, yeah. we uh, laugh all the time, yeah. with big, big smile. So, yeah. And with people like you, I mean, the future is very bright for yeah. our continent. Right. Yeah. It is. It is a joy to look at uh, Liberia, Kenya, mm-hmm. Ghana, Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Yeah. For, and thank a viewer, you thank you for uh, watching this edition of the Africa. The program is, uh, yeah, we do our best to bring uh, interesting Africans to discuss. Uh, our problems and uh, to look for solutions, share ideas on how we can uh, solve this problem. We Afri- uh, the saying is that our belief is that we have not got any problem in Africa that we Africa cannot solve. Mm-hmm. Our future is really very, very bright. Wherever we have gone, we've seen, yeah, people have challenges all over the world. Yeah. But starting, we got the resources, the mineral resources, we got the human potential. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, with uh, people of different ideas and uh, different uh, opinions and uh, willing to share, we believe that uh, Africa will be unbeatable. And on uh, behalf of my wonderful crew, I say thank you very much for watching this edition. Mariano Boya is, uh, has been wonderful. She gave us uh, the facilities. She gave us water, drink, and food to <laughs> She didn't give us food. And uh, our uh, crew in Ghana, I say, Thank you very much for supporting uh, the program. Also f- to our advertisers, thank you for uh, patronizing uh, Focus on Africans. You have been uh, wonderful to keep the program running. Until next week, when we come your way with another edition, I say, you say goodbye, Ijambo, not Kwaheri. 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 Mabe. Mabe, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice.